All right, everyone, welcome to our second show of Heal Thyself. This show is packed with a bunch of stuff. It's going to be good. I have a rant on something very personal that I want to talk about. I have a product review about foods that we are eating every day, most people. And then I have a bomb guest, the guest of the, all guests. So without further ado, let us get started with Heal Thyself, my favorite show ever. All right, so today's knowledge bomb segment is going to be on something that I have been talking about, I swear to God, forever. Around 2010, but really, it feels like forever. I mean, I used to even go to marches to bring awareness to this topic. It's a controversial topic. I don't know why. It's stuff that needs to be known. And this is the whole point. Remember last week I was talking about informed consent. Well, those of you who don't know what the heck glyphosate is, we need to talk about it. Why are GMOs bad? We need to talk about it. This will give you the information to make a decision based on what you learn if you don't know it already. So GMOs are an issue because they are sprayed and doused with an herbicide called glyphosate. I cringe on the inside. My organs cringe every time I hear the word glyphosate because from what I know, I've known, read, learned over the years, it is one of the worst toxins, okay? And my guest later will be able to, will be agreeing with this, I, I bet you, because she's very passionate about it too. But anyway, it's an herbicide. And this herbicide is classed as a 2A carcinogen. That means it probably causes cancer. Let's just start with that. If that's not alarming enough, actually, I don't even have to go down this road anymore. If someone tells me something probably causes cancer, why is it gonna be part of my daily diet? I digress, let's just keep going. Let's go into it. All right, so this is a herbicide where hundreds of millions of pounds are dumped into our food supply. And it's found primarily in sugar, corn, soy, canola, all of those oils too, vegetable oils. And it's used as a desiccant, which means a drying agent in wheat, oatmeal, and uh, and we also saw it in Cheerios, which was last year when that came out, it was the highest, one of the highest foods it was in was Cheerios. I mean, how many times have you been to your sister's house or your aunt's house and saw the toddler chewing on some Cheerios and parents being like, yeah, you know, it's, whole, it's a whole food, it's, it's fiber, this is great for my kid. Well, we find out that Cheerios is one of the most toxic foods you can give a child. Whoa, that was that one. That one blew me away, and I was posting on it, posting on that, and people were like, "Oh my God, I've been giving my toddler Cheerios for years." So again, informed consent, right? We're bringing this to the surface, so y'all are making your decisions. All right. So, why is it out in our food supply? Well, if you have not heard of the company Monsanto, you should. The closest thing to evil is Monsanto uh, in a, in a company. And uh, they, they're actually Monsanto Bayer now because they were bought out by Bayer. Regardless, it went into our food supply because Monsanto said it will not affect mammalian cells. And that's true. It doesn't. We don't have a pathway called the shikimate pathway. But guess what does our gut bacteria? Oh, they have the shikimate pathway. And, and you better believe that they're affected by glyphosate. So what happens is we're eating up this food, these foods with glyphosate, like I mean, let's say corn or let's say non-organic tofu, right? Or soy and something, and we're eating it up. It's becoming a disruptor to our digestive system. It acts like an antibiotic. Now, how many people are like, well, I kind of don't want to take antibiotics right now because I know what it does to my digestive system. Well, how many people would change their tune if they found out that glyphosate acts just like an antibiotic in the system, it totally wipes away your good bacteria and then it promotes the overgrowth of that pathogenic or uh, overgrowth of those microbes that are gonna start causing issues like, what's the hot word, buzzword, leaky gut. Uh, so that's what happens, it's perpetuated over and over and over. So our good bacteria is going out the drain. That's an issue because this good bacteria helps us with vitamins, minerals, synthesis creating them, immune system function, detox, regulating our bowel movements. If that wasn't enough, I mean, I could put this microphone down and walk out and you'd be like, oh, well, glyphosate's pretty crappy. Well, if that wasn't enough, what does it do? It affects our 
detox systems, right? So our liver has this pathway where we're supposed to detox things like heavy metals, estrogens, what they call uh, xenoestrogens, environmental toxins, alcohol, it blocks that pathway. So now we're promoting the, the buildup of, of these toxins. Concerning, very concerning. If that wasn't enough, God damn, we know that glyphosate is associated with lymphoma, leukemia, and reproductive toxicity. Last year, a review came out that showed just in three months at ultra low doses, glyphosate caused fatty liver in, in rats. Well, what's that have to do with me? Well, it has to do with you because ultra low doses that translate to food, to doses that we're, we're eating with, uh, with GMO foods can be promoting fatty liver and thus liver disease. Okay, if that wasn't enough, ready for this one? Here's, here's how corrupt of a company is putting out this food to us, right? Corrupt. Back in 2017, they were being sued and these emails came out to the surface, right? What we learned is that they paid a Stanford professor to publish uh, a paper in Forbes magazine that they ghost writ, right? So they put all this positive data about glyphosate and they paid the Stanford professor to write it in Forbes magazine saying, why is it a probable carcinogen? It's fine, it doesn't cause cancer, this, this, and that. Well, when these emails came out, Forbes was like, oh no, oh no, 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 no. They, they, they retracted everything, they wiped that out and it was brought into the surface. But that wasn't the only email. We start seeing now how corrupt this company was because that we, there was an email from a scientist at Monsanto that even said, if someone came to me and they said they wanted to test Roundup, I know how I would react with serious concern. A scientist at Monsanto, not, not Joe Blow working at the cafeteria who's not, who's not doing the science in there. This is a scientist who knows about what the effects of Roundup can be. That's a telling quote. And here is my favorite quote. This is from an executive. We're talking about a higher up, someone who's supposed to know everything. Quote, you cannot say that Roundup is not a carcinogen. We have not done the necessary testing on the formulation to make that statement. That's coming from a higher up. So I just want to inform everyone about the type of company that is putting out this stuff, all right? Sadly, what we saw also last year was the case of Dwayne Johnson, who was a janitor who was using Roundup, who sued Monsanto for not having informed consent about the risk for cancer. He developed non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and brought them to court, and he was awarded over $289 million from Monsanto because they failed, they failed to uh, warn about the cancer risks. Currently, there's over 5,200 uh, Monsanto's in court with 5,200 different cases about that are similar like this. So this is at the very least eye-opening if you don't know about it. I would hope that most people at, at least know why glyphosate is an issue because it's a major one. I wanna, before I end this rant, uh, share a personal story with a patient of mine. Uh, she came to me with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. She's 32 years old. And we did our patient intake and we, we spoke and we went over everything. And usually, for the most part, when I get to the environmental toxicity part, if you've been exposed to anything, asbestos, I, I don't really get people who are like, oh yeah, for sure, I know I've been exposed to this, this and that. Most people are like, I don't know, maybe, I just, I can't really put my finger on that. But this young, this young woman, she said, yeah, I, I, I've been exposed to glyphosate. I go, you've been exposed to glyphosate? I don't know many people who, who truly know they've been exposed. Well, what she was doing is she was two summers ago preserving these wild flowers by spraying glyphosate all over the weeds, unprotected, without any information that this may or may not cause cancer. Two years later, this girl has non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now, we know that glyphosate is associated with lymphoma, I'm not gonna say that caused her cancer, but I will say that's a big chunk of the pie. So if you went shopping for a car and there was two cars and you know the manufacturer of one car hits all these standards and all the standards you look for for safety. And then the manufacturer of the other car, 
Well, there's a lot of controversy behind it. They may or may not know if it works. They, it may or may not break down in the middle of the highway. The tires may or may not just fall off in the middle of the freeway. Would you even think about buying that car? This is what I'm trying to say. If there's so much controversy and Monsanto's putting so much money to protect itself from telling us what glyphosate does, then why would you put your money into buying GMO foods? All right, so I wanna just inform everyone, this, this is your informed consent. This is you able to now make a decision based on that power, based on knowing what glyphosate does and knowing how to change it. Know your GMO foods, type in foods that have GMOs on Google, look on the images and know those foods, write them out and get those organic. There's how you stay away from glyphosate. So that was my rant on glyphosate, something I'm really passionate about. I hope you felt it. It came out of every, every pore. Um, and yeah, and spread the news. Tell your family to stay away from glyphosate. All right, we're here to our next segment. This is going to be a good one because this is about breakfast food. And who does not like to eat breakfast? Me personally, I look forward to my breakfast. And there was a time when I was in college and, and not really knowing much about real nutrition, just knowing about kind of like, like bro nutrition, right? Like working out and, you know, chicken and uh, salads and brown rice and oatmeal. And I didn't really know much. Didn't really care about much, to be honest. But now, but now I do a lot more. So I'm going to talk a little bit about oatmeal, right? Everyone makes oatmeal. Everyone loves oatmeal. It's quick. It's easy. And you can mix it up with your favorite stuff. All right. So I'm going to go through three today, the worst of the worst, a greenwashing one, and my favorite. All right. We're going to start with the worst of the worst. And I know you've seen this one. All right. Quaker Oats by Pepsi Company. All right. Quaker Oats is one I really need to talk about. All right. This is in pretty much every store since I was a kid. This was the oats that I was using in college every day for breakfast. And these are the oats that were found to have levels of glyphosate that were concerning. Last year, the Environmental Working Group, and I want everyone to know who the Environmental Working Group is because the Environmental Working Group is doing some of the best work when it comes to food toxins, toxins and different personal care products, heavy metals, whatever it may be, you can actually cross check everything with that website. Excellent group. Well, this group did a study on breakfast cereals um, and they were the ones who actually exposed Cheerios, which I'll talk about maybe on another show, but they brought out and revealed about Quaker Oats having a thousand parts per billion of glyphosate. The concern is, is that the allowable level or what they consider the contaminant level of glyphosate, particularly in water, is 700 parts per billion. This is 1,000 parts per billion. This is something that we eat more than one serving. I know I was. I mean, half a cup is a serving. Back when I was really working out and wanting to gain weight, I mean, I was eating like one, two cups a day. All right. So this is a company that even though, and here's the tricky part, look at this. It has a non-GMO label. That should ensure us that there's no glyphosate, even though we still found it. Their website talks about nothing about glyphosate. The website talks nothing about cleaning out pesticides. This is not a good oatmeal, all right? It's cheap for a reason. It's crap. So Quaker is one of the worst oatmeals and one that I would stay away from and one that I wanted to bring to light today. All right, that's Quaker Oats. Let's move on. Oh, I wanna talk about this one. I do, bad, because to me, this is the RX bar of oatmeal. Man, like when I, I, I'll never forget, when I was at Whole Foods, I'm walking around and it's in the refrigerated aisle and I go, oh, what is this? This is just prepackaged oatmeal. I go, this is nice. I mean, this it's got to be clean, organic, non-GMO, all these things. And I'm looking at it. I go, oh, oh, this is, they're using buzzwords just like RX bar. This 
is the greenwashing of all oats. So let's go to it. I know you've seen this if you've been at Whole Foods. It's called the mush bar or the mush uh, oatmeal. This is uh, prepackaged overnight oats, all right? They use all the buzzwords that you ever wanted to hear. You go on the website, they say fresh is in their DNA. And then you're like, ooh, well, fre- I, I, I mean, I don't want spoiled. Fresh is in the DNA. Like that's, that's, that's a company that I want to get behind. No preservatives, no artificial flavors. Great. Dairy-free milk. All right, well, you know, a lot of people are moving away from dairy for good reason. But now we know that it's in almond milk or coconut milk. It's non-GMO, or so it says, right? Protein rich. I mean, we're all obsessed with protein. I mean, if I'm going to get protein in this, like I'm good, right? High fiber, awesome. Here is my problem with this mush oatmeal. They use the buzzwords. There is no standardization, nothing that shows me that their oats are organic, free of glyphosate, nothing that shows me in their flavors that are blueberry or apple, and in the, two of their flavors, they have a blueberry uh, flavor and an apple flavor, but the blueberry also has some apple concentrates, I believe. Nothing shows me that there these are organic blueberries and apples. Now, if you watch the last show, I talked about how you can't even pay me to have a conventional apple or, or blueberry, and we found that in the That's It bar. There was one apple and 20 blueberries. Well, this has no proof to me that these are not highly sprayed conventional apples or blueberries. They can tell me, but there's nothing on the website. Now, here's something that I learned back when I was in school, when I was vetting all these supplement companies. If a company has the highest practices, they will be proud to tell you. you if the minute they pick up the phone, they'll be like, we are certified for this. We are third party tested for this. We can send you all the information. We're glad to email it to you, all of this. They're proud to talk about it. Their website will be telling you about every specification, certification, standardization that they have. When companies are ambiguous and use buzzwords, you have to be careful. That's when they are kind of putting you a little bit in the gray area, putting you in the dark for a reason. And this is what Mush does. I don't like it, not one bit. So again, to reiterate, the oats, no proof that they're not doused in glyphosate. Actually, no proof that they're just not Quaker oats. No proof that they're not doused in glyphosate. Nothing about organic label. Nothing about the blueberries or the apples being uh, pesticide-free. And then nothing about the almond milk that they're using uh, to soak these oats, nothing about that being uh, organic and free of preservatives, I mean, free of uh, pesticides. So the packaging looks great. I mean, this is clean, right? It looks good. It's at Whole Foods. It must be healthy. But now you're empowered enough to know that this is just greenwashing. So the mush oats, I would just put some raisins in it, put some blueberries, mush it up and throw it in the garbage because this is not something that I would ever eat. All right. Let's talk about our number one oats. All right, I spoke to the company quite a while ago because I wanted to know how clean, how high quality, how dedicated they are to us, the people, the consumer. Remember I just said, a company will be proud to tell you about themselves right from the get-go. And this is something that Bob's Red Mill did. I mean, they wrote me, Paragraph after paragraph after paragraph saying, here's what we do. Here's how we do it. And here's why you should love us. I was like, you know what? I love you. All right. Bob's Red Mill. Boom. Here we go. Bob's Red Mill. Automatically, the first thing that I see, better than Quaker, better than that mush crap, is this USDA organic label. What's this telling me? Is that they've taken every precaution to make sure that there is no chemical synthetic pesticides in it, including glyphosate, which I went on my rant about. This is necessary. We want to see that USDA organic label. No glyphosate. Okay. Still, unfortunately, what happens is many of these farms have nearby farms, which do use glyphosate, blow over. So that's why I always say USDA organic is never perfect because there can be some glyphosate. But we know 
that these oats are not being sprayed or dried as a desiccant, a drying agent. They're not using glyphosate to dry it. So we know that Bob's Red Mill is dedicated to really high standards, right? They vet each and every one of their farmers. They say glyphosate is forbidden from any of their food. It's never used as a desiccant. And they are just a company that uses such high standards and high quality, and they're doing it right. So spend the extra two bucks, get yourself something that is not going to give you glyphosate exposure over and over and give it to your kids over and over that we know that it can cause diseases and we know that it can cause dysfunction in the body. Why not just give yourself something that is the cleanest of the clean? So Bob's Red Mill. Bob, if I would, if I saw you, I'd give you a hug with your white beard and I tell you, you're doing it right and I got a lot of love for you. So those are my three oatmeal product reviews and um, I hope you learned something. All right, next segment, we're gonna get into it with one of my favorite guests. So uh, yeah, sit tight and we're gonna be moving on with that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to bring in my first guest ever at Heal Thyself. This is one of my personal favorite people in the world, in the online community, and a true inspiration, no lie, for myself, and I know I speak for many others. So, without further ado, please let me introduce the one, the only, Dr. Jess Petras. Thanks so much, Dr. G. I appreciate you having me on, and I'm so honored. I feel the same way about you, so thanks so much for do the you, lovely introduction. You feel the love? I do. I feel the love from everyone on the internet world, and you too. It's great. So, this, this, is, this is true, because look, every time I go on your story... <laughs> I see love pouring out from people, mm-hmm. one in Zimbabwe, one in Ethiopia, <laughs> one in Romania, one in New Zealand. What is this? You know, I, I can't really tell you. I'm sort of flabbergasted every day by it myself. Um, it, it started out humble, me just educating people, and then it's sort of, I feel like I kind of broke through a glass ceiling or something recently, and it's, so, it's beautiful, but it's overwhelming and beautiful at the same time. Yeah, so. it's, it's like a tidal wave of love and support. And then a tidal wave of people who are like, I'm really sick. Yeah. Right? It, I mean, everything in life is a duality, right? So, of course, there's the amazing love, thank you, thank you, thank you. And there's people, please help me every day, which, you know, gosh, there's one of me, so the pressure's real. <laughs> That's what I was just going to say. There's only one of you. So yeah. I think the beautiful thing is that here in our online community where we talk a lot, there's so much support with each other, right? So we'll, we'll be vibing and we'll say, look, this is an amazing post by Dr. Jess hey, look, Dr. G talked about this. And I love how we support each other, yes. right? There's only one of us, but the community, yes. we give people resources about different specialties and different things that people can benefit from. Absolutely. I feel like we've grown into a community, um, a camaraderie, actually, if you will. And it's really nice because I know that you guys have my back and vice versa, no matter what. So, And we really do support and uplift everyone. And I want everyone putting out amazing free information, educational information, to have as many followers as possible yeah, yeah, because yeah. those are the people in the light helping everyone. Yeah. So, but Back to the support, guy getting each other's <laughs> back. I'll never forget, I call out this one doctor for one thing on the on the internet. I know what you're talking about. Right, right. He was publicizing. <laughs> he was just publicizing some toxic stuff. And I'm like, this guy's a massive audience. Like, mm-hmm. and these people are now saying, all right, yeah, this is totally okay. He may or may not have been educated enough, but still, I said something I didn't think anyone saw. Oh, yeah. Next thing I know, all the troops come in. Yeah, yeah. Right? I got one I got one comment from, <laughs> from my friend, and then you come in with a paragraph, and I was like, yeah. Wow, these people got my back. This is pretty cool. I think this guy with like millions of followers was as was was repping Clorox. Mm-hmm. Clorox, Wasn't Clorox, it? yeah, I Clorox. Think, yeah, so it was just kind of like I mean, I think you called him a sellout, which I, I agree with. <laughs> oh, I was a savage. I didn't care, but <laughs> that's but the, but the thing is this: it's it's because that's just passion coming out, right? I know you have that fire in you. Oh, I gotta watch myself sometimes. <laughs> I know you got that Leo energy. That's it's, why it's bad, and I'm a double Leo. <laughs> right there, like all the stars align. Burn that myself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but it's 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 beautiful that I I felt whoa these people really have my back. Like I thought. Of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's that's a beautiful thing. So anyway, <laughs> so I have known you or known of you since I was in naturopathic school. Really. 2014. Yeah, that's your old about right. account. Yeah. What was your old account? It was 
<laughs> this is so funny. It was MD for medical doctor. Yeah. KY for Kentucky. But yeah. this was this was misconstrued because it was MD KY girl. So yeah. everyone was like, KY jelly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> MD KY jelly girl. All right. Well, anyway, I, I, I was following MD KY girl. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, oh, she's pretty cool. Like, yeah, like she's got a good vibe. Then I got off and then I got back on to start mm. my page. Mm -hmm. And then I saw you and I was like, Oh, she's putting some good content. I go, wait a minute. I know this girl. This is MDKY girl. I go, she's Dr. Jess now. Yeah. But you were putting up some good comment. And I, w I wanted to say something. When I started my thing, I just wanted to do it for friends and family. That's it. Really? That was the only point. It was just educating friends and family. Then early on, you had reposted one of the things that I put about the 12 toxins that are found uh, in makeup. Yep. And you're like, hey, everyone follow this awakened doctor. Yep. And I've, I, it was a tidal wave of people that I've never met following me. I said, wait a minute, what's going I on? I like those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it shifted from like a focus on friends and family to yeah. a little bit more responsibility about educating people. Amazing. And that's how it happens. You kind of can see a perspective change Yeah. about a way. Um, because I think we all go into medical school to help people originally. Some people get jaded, I think. But we all go into it with an open heart, I think, and kind of learn how much we like the medicine we're taught or not. And so, um, you know, really when you see a different perspective like that, like a different way to maybe help people, yeah, it's, it's amazing because the door was kind of open for you a little bit, hopefully. And yeah. then look at your page now. You help everyone. Yeah, bro. So. But massive amounts of people that we get to help, right? When oh. we're in a hospital community or a clinic, we only have X amount of people. You're very right? controlled too. Controlled. Ooh. I felt very controlled. Lit, uh, you know where we're going with this, right? You're leading us to the next yeah, part. Yeah, I, I gave you an in there. You did. <laughs> so, so, so you were a hospitalist. I was. Yeah, I was on the other side. It's true. Where? <laughs> in Louisville, Kentucky, actually. Okay. So, you know, MDKY girl. So um, that's where I hail from. I was there for 14 years. I went to medical school there. I went to internal medicine residency there. And then worked as a hospitalist for almost seven years at a level one trauma center. And so um, I can remember being on call for three different hospitals, covering over 100 patients a night. Um, anything went wrong, they called me. New patients came into the hospital. I was giving orders, admitting orders, and overseeing any emergencies that happened and going in to see the patients. It was really hard. I worked seven days on and seven days off. And, you know, it was great. You could travel on your seven days off. But on your seven days on, it was like, I mean, you just didn't even have time to go to the bathroom. Really? Yeah, and the food is terrible in the hospital. And I can remember kind of when I started to stir and move, I, eventually I moved to the West Coast and I started to see things were different. Um, and I sort of tried to reach out to patients and tell them different ways. Hey, you don't need to be on this proton pump inhibitor for, you know, six years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, maybe we should look at something else. Hey, you have Chagas disease. Have you ever looked at parasites or anything? Yeah. You know, and I they would... Sit, take me off to the side and reprimand me. They'd be like, you can't write that in the chart anymore. The PCP, the primary care doctor, um, wrote that proton pump inhibitor for their acid reflux seven years ago. When you call them out and say it's a liability, you're calling out the primary care doctor. Mm, and so God was, forbid, right? Sorry. Yeah. And they were like, well, you're not going to be able to work for us if you continue doing this. That's okay. I'll leave anyway. Is that what happened? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, they kind of warned me. It was like, you know, sending me, they like me, but it was, and they'd say, they'd preface it by saying the, the medical system is so messed up. We understand that. But there's nothing we can do. Our hands are tied. Here are the rules. Yada, yada, yada. And I just got tired of it. I don't care what the rules are. You know, um, legality doesn't equal morality. Yeah. So, and, and you can't like put a safety net on yourself saying, well, our system's kind of messed up, but we're going to work within it. Like change it, man. You <laughs> you're know? part of the problem. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're part of the problem. <laughs> and I was part of the problem. So if I was going to be accountable and I knew better, you know, you should do better when you know better. That's how I sort of felt about it. It was really hard for me. Like I can remember really feeling my heartstrings being pulled out when I was like, I felt trapped. How am I going to leave this system and still pay my bills and still feel like I'm helping people and using my education that I worked so hard for? Mm -hmm. you know? And then you said? And then, you know, I was lucky. I didn't have kids or anything that kept me strapped in. So eventually I just jumped ship. I, I moved to California from Oregon. And I actually lived with my best friend for a little while. And I worked, I lived in Long Beach and I worked in Irvine um, two days a week or three days a week and Monterey Park two days a week. And so I was driving an hour in traffic every day and making like kind of chump change at these little like alternative clinics, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, I guess finally I got hard on at Whitaker Wellness. 
if you remember them. In, in L.A.? It was in Newport Beach. Okay, yeah. And Julian Whitaker was this famous medical doctor who, in the 1980s, um, was reversing heart disease and diabetes mm-hmm. and um, has this amazing... I mean, they had hyperbaric oxygen chambers and IVs and, you know, neurofeedback. They had everything. It was amazing. So I learned so much. It was like boot camp yeah. for naturopathy. Yeah. And um, Julian Whitaker got sued by Medicare for if they claimed improper billing, and he beat them in court. Oh, is that right? He's a badass. Really? Yes. So you saw all of a sudden, you go from this conventional system, yeah, right, where you see so many loops and, hole, and, and holes you have to jump through, and you're like, I'm not doing this. This is not my vibe. Then you all of a sudden go into this whole new field, and you're like, well, I'm not really making good money doing this uh, mm-hmm. out of nowhere, mm-hmm. not learning too much. They're mm-hmm. kind of, And then you hit this Whitaker Wellness one, and you're like, whoa, this is pretty cool. I was like, look what he's done. Then you saw the power in the medicine, right? Yeah. I was like, you know, here's the problem. They don't teach you business. Mm. That's how they hold doctors down. Because, you know, I didn't know anything about business. It's not until very recently that I've considered myself a businesswoman at all. (laughs) I learned through the fire. And so, you know, that kept me kind of constricted, that belief that I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to run a business. I didn't know how to have a clinic. I didn't know how to, you know, do anything but take care of patients, right? That belief was my prison for a while. I speak the same for naturopathic <laughs> doctors, if not worse. Really? We, yeah, we come from a place where we're saying, you know, we're doing so much good and it's from the heart. You know, it, we don't do it for the money. But at, at the other side of it is I got real American loans to pay. Like, I think, I think, <laughs> yeah. I think we should all come out knowing how we can grow our own business, our own That's brand right. to reach have a massive reach to a great amount of people, right? That we can touch, we can help, we can make them healthier. That's the fear though. If you're a doctor that's independent and you're not restricted by the system, you're not restricted by the same rules. Mm. That's the fear. Yeah. There's yeah. a, it's a on purpose that we're not taught business in my opinion. Interesting. It's in my opinion. You yeah, know? no, no. I, I believe, <laughs> I, 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 I vibe with your opinion. You are the, you are the same vibe that I, you're, I'm coming from here. Like, I, I know what you're saying. You know, yeah, because when I was a hospitalist, you get to think about it. I was in the age when they brought in, you know, Obama passed. They had to have electronic medical records, right? So everyone's moving from paper charts to computer, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I saw massive epic roll-ins. And um, it was like, I feel like you can order an oil change on that system. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was 16 hours of training to learn that EMR. It was terrible. And it takes away kind of like free independent thought or protocols. They're protocols. Mm -hmm. They're cookbook medicine, Mm -hmm. you know? For everyone. Everyone's getting the same thing, (laughs) right? I was like, I can't do this. Yeah. I'm not a button-pushing robot. Yeah. I don't agree with the fact that, you know, this 19-year-old had a stroke because she popped her neck and sheared her carotid and they want to give her a statin. Mm -hmm. I disagree with your protocol. Mm -hmm. But you're not, you don't have room for independent free thought in a system like that because you're stuck in their system. Yeah. So I just couldn't continue to do something that I inherently disagreed with. I have a problem with that. I think when you know the truth, you have to be, you have to do better. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And and that, that speaks to a lot of part of where you are intuitively too, right? Mm-hmm. Like feeling yeah. not right, feeling disconnected to where you are. Yeah. And then saying, this doesn't vibe with me. I'm not gonna live my life like this. You That's know? Right. And and totally walking your path and speaking your truth. And I think back then, if you saw how many people's lives you'd be helping now, you may or may not have been believed it, believing oh, it at I all, would, right? Uh-uh. Yeah. But but you see you <laughs> listen to something deep within inside saying, Hey Jess, get the heck out of here. Right? Oh, always. I mean, I I look back now in hindsight and I'm like, wow, there's always been something bigger helping me. Mm-hmm. Always. You know, your intuition's so strong. I'm, I mean, I still to this day say everything that comes through me that I help people is through me. It's yeah. not fr- it's not me. Yeah. It's through me. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. it's it's something more powerful, right? Yeah. You're just a medium? Yes. I'm a vessel for that, if you will. You're like a medical medium with a license. <laughs> yeah. They didn't know what they were doing when they gave me that license. <laughs> So, so then, so then you, you finished with Whitaker and then what? So, okay. Um, <clears throat> that's a good story. Um, I finished Whitaker. I'm trying to think what I did next after that. So, um, yes. So actually I, I met an, an ex now who I ended up moving back to Portland with Portland, Oregon. You went back. Uh huh. And this guy knew how to make pills with like, you know, the big plastic sheets that you press together with oh, the yeah. little pill maker things yeah, yeah. and you put the powder in them and 
you know, he said, what do you want more than anything in the world? And I said, a supplement company. He said, I know how to make pills. And I said, really? Well, I have coincidentally 70,000 followers on Instagram just yeah. kind of waiting for me. I've been teaching them so long about all this kind of stuff. And um, we just started making pills in my house. Really? Yeah. I remember that you were like yes. in your in your kitchen with boxes. Oh, it was insane. I remember you posted like, something like we this. We literally would ago. pack the boxes ourselves, take them to the post. The post office hated us. It was like two hours. Yeah, just... I remember this clearly. Yeah, you were just shipping <laughs> them out. It was so stressful. I would get all the emails myself. It was just me and him. It was nuts. So then when that kind of blew up, because in the end, it wasn't a good relationship. He was kind of abusive in the end, mm, um, unfortunately. I, I remember that. Too. Yes, you remember that too. But you know what? That's like kind of, when, kind of when you hit rock bottom, that's where the light enters. So I'm grateful for everything that happened to me. I learned a lot about myself, and I needed to learn how to love myself more. That was the whole purpose in that re abusive relationship. So. I, I agree with that. Yeah. It, it isn't, isn't every situation an opportunity to, for us to choose our highest self? Like yes. for us to choose our higher physical, mental, emotional, spiritual self, be, Absolutely. being more loving towards ourselves and others, right? Absolutely. Again, and intuitive Jess was like, I need to be more loving with myself. Yeah. Right? Yeah, for sure. Now, um, now my hormones are much more um, balanced and I, I'm, I love myself more. I would never go back and make that same decision with that person again. But it had a purpose because, you know, it, they were my formulations, but I had no idea how to make pills. Would I even had the, the gall to do that on my own? Probably not. Yeah. So, you know, I'm grateful for that. Yeah. Um, and in, in actually 10 months, I had um, 12 supplements. So it moved really quickly. Um, and I learned how to formulate. I love it. And um, eventually, you know, the business got turned back over to me, obviously. And um, it's now in a GMP NSF certified warehouse. The, the supplements are rolling and I'm doing a lot of stuff in San Diego now. Oh yeah, so. you're there. Can you tell us what GMP is so people yes, know? Yes, good manufacturing practices. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and that means that, you know, everything is third party tested. They test for metals, they test for pesticides, they test for all kinds of things that we weren't testing for, obviously when I was making them in my basement of my house, yeah. you know, and I make sure that everything is sourced properly. So I, I'm involved in sourcing and make sure everything's organic and wild craft that goes in. Um, and so it's it's amazing because you have to have the FDA can come in and regulate and look at this warehouse and make sure they're following all the things that protect the um, consumer. Yeah. Right. And so that's how the FDA regulates these pills is they do it through the manufacturing process. So let's explain to the listeners then, if I go to Costco, you mean to tell me that my vitamins aren't mm -hmm. FDA or, or, or a third party tested oh, GMP? No, 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 it's no, not, no. It's all, all, all supplements don't have to be GMP. No, not at uh, all. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. that's why you guys want to look for somebody who make who makes sure that their products are NSF and GMP certified so that, that you are ensuring that that quality care is there, that quality assurance for your products. Because stuff at Costco, Walmart, I mean, you have no idea that the FDA doesn't look at those at all. There's no sourcing done. There's no testing done. You can get stuff from China and it may or may not be what they're, they're claiming. Yeah. 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 Anything <laughs> that comes from China or India, I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. That's why I only work with a handful of supplement companies because of these stipulations that you're talking about. There's no one taking care of your vitamins, minerals, supplements, everything. Herbs are sometimes the worst. That's getting ready to change soon. Fact. It is. Yes. What the FDA is cracking down. I don't uh. know a whole, whole bunch, but I've seen a couple news releases and press releases lately saying that the FDA is going to step in soon to start regulating supplements. Well, good. So, yeah. Well, good. It's actually good for me and good for people following the practices already. Yeah. So, so people, listen, every single time I log on Instagram, tell me why I see something about microbiome master, <laughs> hormone master. There's some sort of new master coming out every single time. There's somebody oh, posting with it. So people are going crazy over this stuff. And and here's how I know. Because I'll get a patient and they'll be like, I'll go over supplements. I kid you not, 90% <laughs> are taking one of or two of or three of your supplements plus more. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, listen, I'm cool with that. Keep going with it. But <laughs> nice. it's it, there's a lot of, so this whole supplement business has grown for you. Yeah, I'm so humbled. I just never thought in a million years, it's amazing. Um, yeah, it's, Microbiome was my flagship product. And so um, it's 11 different wildcrafted herbs that are geared towards parasites. But actually, it's really great for viruses and bacteria sometimes too, and mold even, mm -hmm. from what I've found. Um, so, and my highest selling supplement is Hormone Master. And I can't keep that one on the shelves. And I never, I mean, I'm telling you, some... 
I, it's just something was working through me when I was formulating those. I don't know how else to say it. People have done very well with them. Yeah. I know I know personally people who've done the hormone one. Mm -hmm. Some of my patients were like, mm -hmm. I've actually been good with them. Yeah. Stop them, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh no no no! Like I, you know, at least I have to start getting my body. Yeah, it's really helpful. Is it? What what other part? Right. We 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 just talked about before we we were out outside. Supplements are just a little part. What's so yes. important for these patients? Because because <laughs> like like I know I see it on Instagram. You see it on Instagram. Patients are like, "Hey, what can I take for this? I have a headache. What supplement can I take for this? I have back pain. What supplement can I take for this? Yeah. Right? This for that. That's like, I might as well be a conventional doctor just handing out supplements. Right? Because right. there's something there's deeper. The mindset is still there. That a pill for every ill. Exactly. And even if you look at it holistically, they're still looking at it from that same kind of skewed perspective. Unfortunately, it's really we got to work an uphill battle to change that. Yeah. So. You know, obviously, there's no magic bullet pill. There's, it's not just not going to fix you without other work than proactivity on your part. So I tell lots of people, if you're not ready to change, don't come see me. Mm. Because yeah. just please, because you'll waste my time and yours and money for you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for, for me, it's, it's a lifestyle perspective change completely. You know, we look at, your, obviously, we look at their diet. Mm. We look at what their life is like. How's your stress? Are you doing something that's not your dharma or soul mission that's killing you every day? Are you um, in toxic relationships with people or work or careers? I mean, that's soul sucking. You talk, it, stress is underrated. Um, so I obviously address that. Did you have a happy childhood? Yep. Why not? Were you sick all the time? Do you have antibiotics? Were you breastfed? Do you play in the dirt? Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know. How's your? Um, let's look at the adverse childhood events. That's important too. Yeah. Um, you know, and then also, you know, we want to look at toxic burdens. What are you exposed mm -hmm. to every day? Environmental toxicity. You know, I love that stuff. I know you love that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'll, talk about and, it all I'll day. never forget the videos of you at like Target with like, here are organic tampons, ladies. What are you doing putting these dioxins oh, in your body? Oh, what you didn't know <laughs> was I had a whole crowd of women on that aisle. You did? Yeah, outside of the camera. They were it, like swooning over Dr. Yeah, G. They were, they were like, <laughs> oh my God, I didn't know about these tampons. I go, well, I must change them. Thank you, sir. I was like, oh, well, thank you. <laughs> See, just a little Instagram clip in real life, you still helped a bunch of women. Yeah, so. exactly. But yeah. I, I want to go back to something so important that you said. Mm -hmm. Stress is underrated, oh. <laughs> right? We yeah. live in this American society, and we, we it's like morning, go, 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 night, we're still going. Oh, you get an employee of the month for that. What do you you mean? get an employee of the month if you just grind till your bones are showing, you're, right? You're dying in the hospital, good, but you get a promotion at work. We Isn't don't care about your crazy? body. <laughs> let, let, let me, let me, I know you'll appreciate this. I had this one patient, she goes, Dr. G, I can't poop. I, I'm constipated, I can't go to the bathroom, I can't poop. I was like, okay, so we went over dietary stuff. Obviously, we, we went through the stuff that is affecting her diet, right? Like we took off dairy, we took off gluten, we took off all the crap Love that it. she's eating. I said, yeah, let's do a stool test. We can do that too. Check, you know, dysbiosis. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll just see the whole picture. My favorite part was this. <laughs> Two weeks later, she goes, hey, Dr. G, I broke up with my boyfriend. I'm pooping again now. Like she broke up with her boyfriend who was holding in. She was holding in all that trauma, all that mm -hmm. stress from being with him. Remember like mm -hmm. talking about if they're bringing you down, right? Mm -hmm. And then now she's pooping. The mind-body connection. I'm like you. He was the parasite. He was the parasite, right? There are emotional or physical parasites all yeah. the time. <laughs> so uh, this is this is where <laughs> conventional medicine a lot of time sort of overlooks, and it's just like mm -hmm. pill for an ill, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. rather than being like, let's look at deeper stuff, right? But yeah, I always, I've posted on it a couple times, but I always talk about Takasubu cardiomyopathy. It's one of my favorite examples that Western medicine actually acknowledges, where there is a stress tied in with the physical manifestation, you know, the death of a loved one, stress of something like that can actually cause a broken heart. It's also broken heart syndrome, right? So people will actually go into flash pulmonary edema, heart failure, or even have a heart attack. They'll go in with a cath and look and there's no blockages. It's a spasming artery. It's actually a broken heart from the loss of someone. Yeah. So, it, you know, they acknowledge that as a, as, a, as a legitimate disorder, but yet they continue to press on the stressful lifestyle within their walls, four walls of the hospital, mm -hmm. and don't address it with patients. Mm -mm, not at all. Not at all. So it's hypocritical. It really the, is. This is why I'm telling all my patients to do the hippie stuff and going outside <laughs> barefoot and walking around it. on the ground and looking at the sun. I mean, mm -hmm. there is power when we get back to nature. Absolutely. And, and it's not something natural when we're answering emails at 12 or 11.30 at night, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, me too. I'm answering Instagram messages at 11.30 with blue blockers on, but still, it doesn't... 
it doesn't matter. I'm still, I saw it. Yeah. yeah, I'm still, it's still messing up my sleep. So it's something that is like perpetuates through all our society, right? Oh, yeah. Different parts, but. They'd love us to have just a virtual society, a mm-hmm. virtual world. They would love that, but. What happened to real connection? Oh, I know. Here's all this. We're all on social media. We're all talking, 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 which prevents us. You know, when someone calls me now, I'm like, why are you calling me? Because you have texted that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what's wrong with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. we just live in a virtual world and never talk to each other anymore. Yeah, what is that? So. What is that? I, I, I brainwashing. Brainwashing, like <laughs> slow brainwashing through time, Sidious. where it's where it becomes oh. very natural to us all of a sudden. But then everybody who's not on their phone is abnormal. Yeah, I, I was watching an '80s movie and I saw a bunch of kids in high school, and I was like, none of these kids are on their phone. I go, was this what it was like? I don't remember my childhood anymore. Like, it was so organic when people were just talking to each other oh, without yeah. looking at their phones at the bus stop. Um, yeah. but that's, that, that goes back to the human connection element of health, right? It does. And, and, you know, I also worry, I know you do too, about the Wi-Fi. So oh my God. Not just talking about lost connection, which is another big pillar of health, but mm-hmm. Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> what is I, this? I unplug mine like, like a crazy person every night. Yeah. But, but we, too. now they're going with the, what, the 5G, 6G? Whatever, whatever yeah. G that is going to be messing. It's it, it, 17 G. It's like all our insides are fried. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what was the craziest thing I found is that um, for amalgams, folks who are exposed with EMF, releasing more mercury <gasps> from the amalgams through EMF exposure. I was like, whoa, that was crazy, that study. There's but, a study? Yeah. Oh my God, I'm going to yeah, go read it. it. To you. Yeah. I'm Isn't such that a nerd. Crazy? I'm like, I can't wait to read this. Yeah. <laughs> But, but that's that's another important thing, right? But Uh-oh. but here we are with our phones, like, at the gym, we, as women, putting them in our sports bra, right? Oh, my God. Or in our pockets. Or in our pocket, or man. Ovaries, yeah. It's like everything. We don't even think about it. And we don't even realize that everything's energy. No one thinks about this. And these are invisible waves just moving through us every day. What does this mean? There's not been a whole bunch of scientific literature published on this. And the things I've seen... Um, there's definitely controversy there, but some of the studies that are negative are coming out are absolutely terrifying. Yeah, and we know it affects children's brains. <laughs> oh yeah, and it changes the microbiome. Mm. The way they picked a wavelength a hertz that changes our microbiome. Is, then let me ask you: Is it a coincidence that every time I leave my phone at home, I was like, God, I feel so good, I feel so grounded, I feel so high Free. vibration, right? <laughs> and then I'm like, Oh well, it must be my phone. But I think it's something that we need to be more attention to. Yeah. I think within the next year, as practitioners, we're going to be talking a lot more about EMFs and Wi-Fi. And I'm hoping the studies stuff. will continue. Yeah. You know, they're trying to roll it out so fast, and I, like everyone wants it. I'm like, Who's screaming that we don't have fast enough? internet all the mm-hmm. time is this a problem mm-hmm. I don't yeah feel like my internet's problem. fine yeah like i yeah, I, even, I, I think i, I got an it. iphone one and i'm fine with it you know yeah if exactly you, i don't know i pull out and take a picture and they're like what phone is that i was like it's an iphone they're like what version i was like the one that came out last year you know we no one can keep track about they're just getting bigger and bigger and more fat. they're huge i know yeah this was something interesting that we spoke about before we got on camera is um Mold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How many people are coming to you now with mold toxicity? It's so crazy. You know, um, it, the symptoms are there. And so what's unfortunate is not everyone can afford to test. You know, the mycotox test is rel- relatively affordable to look for mold. But Lyme and tick-associated illnesses really cross symptoms with, yeah. with mycotoxin illness and SARS. Sometimes I just refer to it as a whole as biotoxin illness. Yeah. And so, you know, I, the treatment is kind of the same. For both, it's just how long is the treatment, depending on which one you find. And mold is a huge problem that's overlooked. Lyme is a little, people have heard of that, but mold, people will be like, huh, Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So yeah. it's totally overlooked. And by doctors too, all of medicine. Yeah. <laughs> it's And you're getting a lot of people coming in now. Oh man, it's unreal how many people are coming to me. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? I've been prescribed, you know, medicine for ADHD, for addictions, for, you know, depression, anxiety. Um, no one can tell me what's wrong. I'm constantly dizzy. I'm constantly have brain fog. My ears are always ringing. I have eye floaters. I'm so sick. I'm so weak and heavy. You know, there's no ICD-10 code for that no. in, in medicine. No. There's no billing code because they don't believe in that at all. No. Oh, interesting. And yeah. and here, I want to share with you, um, in naturopathic school, we learned a little bit about mold. Molds, what, you know, what, what species, what biotoxins. Oh, yeah. But it was kind of breezed over. It was breezed sort over. of one of those things in ID. Da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> so me personally, I mean, it's not something that I ever really look for in patients until more recently. Mm-hmm. And it's not something I look for within myself. But mm-hmm. I wanted to tell you something. 
Last year, my ribs just expanded. My spleen was swollen, right? I got an ultrasound. They're like, your spleen is, you have, you have, you have you, do you remember? I sort of mentioned this. They have, yes. you have splenomegaly. I said, oh no, what the heck is going on with me? You're a bored question. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I, right? You <laughs> are. like 34 year old male. <laughs> you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it was, it took so long for me to understand what was going on, but I found that I was going, every time I would go to my dad's new house, which is an older house, it was making me sick. Yep. That's three days, I'm, three days, I'm good. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty good. And then the three days after, I'm going downhill. Exhaustion, yep. the, the swelling of the ribs, fatigue, joint pain, nasal, uh, mm -hmm. I can't recall words. Like, what is that? It's insane brain fog with this stuff. I've never seen anything like that. Like, I can talk to a wall if the wall talks back. Like, I don't understand how I couldn't recall words. Yeah. That was driving me nuts. And Jess. another, there's a couple symptoms that are really indicative of mold. Even a feeling of depersonalization, like your life is not your own. Mm. People who have in, get mold, like SIRS, they really feel like that. Static shocks at night. Like, Ooh, like restless yeah, yeah. body syndrome almost. Yeah. <clears throat> Difficulty holding urine. Yeah. So weird stuff like that too, along with the other mainstream things we talked about. But yeah, so you got to be careful. I mean, it takes hold if you have the right genes and you're susceptible. Oh man, it doesn't even matter if the mold exposure is removed. You can yeah. continue with this crazy immune stuff afterwards. Yeah, and you can check for those genes, right? The HLA. You can, yeah, yeah. DQ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are the ones that those ones are a problem, and those people unfortunately are also prone to celiac disease sometimes too. Mm -hmm. Which so I I hate it because they're like a double whammy a little bit. Yeah. So sometimes I don't even check genotypes for people because it's a, it kind of is a negative prognosis for them as yeah. far as other gene yeah. haplotypes are connect are concerned. So I try not to scare people. Just how too they present much. basically, and you say. Okay, and then they take the mycotoxin test. I ha yes, I have such specific questions for mold, so I'm fairly certain before their test comes back whether they're going to come back positive or negative. And if there's any question, you know, with the urine mycotox, I can do blood work too, the serum blood work, like the Shoemaker protocol. Mm -hmm. So, but, but that's so expensive. It is. It's much cheaper it's just protocol. to do the urine test. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And so I really try and spend an hour with a patient, ask very detailed questions, so I'm fairly certain beforehand. What do I mean? What do we do before we had these labs? Tests. We yeah. were clinicians who yeah. asked really specific questions. Mm -hmm. That's so, the art of medicine, right? Art of medicine. That I try to lost. go back to that. Yeah. And then, you know, I address, you know, also sleep. If you're women, cycles, energy, diet, and all of that adds in to let you know how likely someone is that they have biotoxin illness or mold or something. Yeah. yeah. So, it, it, and here, here was the, one of the most interesting symptoms that I was dealing with was Okay. I had an insatiable amount of water. Like I would just chug water. Really? That's and I think that's probably for the ADH dysfunction, right? Oh yeah. So I was chugging water and peeing, chugging water oh, and peeing. Oh, you were, yeah. I just couldn't stop drinking water, and I knew something was wrong. But here was the craziest part, and I want to, I want to share this. I I was going through my stuff, and I opened up the, all these old books that I had. Because mold really hangs out in like the pages of books, what, curtains, bedding. Oh, yeah. Right? Crawl Linens, spaces. Crawl spaces, rugs. Oh, yeah. Carpet. Yeah. So I smell the book. Oh, God. And it smelled like very distinct and musty. Within two minutes, I had black circles under my eyes. Yep. Literally, my friend was like, look at your eyes. I was like, what's wrong with my eyes? Black circles on it. At that point, I said, oh, my God, I'm this is way bigger you. and more insidious. It just came out of nowhere. I've seen it. It changes the way people look. Like it, age, I can't even tell you how much it makes. Like the inflammation in the face will form wrinkles on the forehead, Whoa. The black circles, and I can't tell you the difference in how people change after you get rid of their toxic indolent mold infection. They look like ten years younger. It's amazing to me. And mold is connected to so many other disorders later on. So you have to find it. It's so concerning because more and more people are now presenting with it because it's been becoming more mainstream, right? And, and and is it difficult to treat in your estimation? It's pretty stubborn. So when you think about candida, that's just unicellular hyphae. And then when you go look at mold, that's multicellular. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit more of a complex matrix in the beginning. And that, you know, they're stubborn. Like if you get them in the sinuses and nasal cavities, it's think about scraping that crud off. Mm. It's kind of like pond scum, 
you know, Oof. it's really gross. Oof. And there anywhere there's a mucous membrane. So, you know, here, throat, yeah. lungs, urinary tract, vagina and testicles, even GI tract, mm -hmm. um, even in the synovial joint fluid. So people even have joint pains with it too. But you can't find the sucker in the blood. That's why no one finds it. Look to blood test, you're not gonna find it. No. And regular medicine only believes in like aspergillosis when it's people systemically have Yeah, yeah and they breathe fungal. it in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, there's so much more. Yeah, so. there's so much more. So should everyone who has mold toxicity have an air purifier in their home? That's a great question. So it depends. Um, if, if the mold is still present in the house, then I think that's the first thing to address. And people say, can I still live in my house? That's it, a good question, right? It depends. Yeah, yeah, it's really case by case. So some people can completely renovate their house, tear up the carpet, you know, get an ERMI test, make sure before and after it's cleaned off. And that some people can do that. The majority of people I don't recommend. I say you need to get out of the house. Yeah. You know, and at that point, if they still are sick after they get out of the house, it's a good idea to get a good air filter. Yeah. You know, um, I think that the main thing is to get out of the moldy environment because no air filter will fix while you're still exposed. No way. Yeah. And, and what's the ERMI test so people know? So the ERMI test, the EPA approved test that, that you can get done. And it's really the only one that um, people that I recommend because there's so many different mold tests where people just come in and get samples from the air or, you know, a, a sample from the table. Mm -hmm. And it's just not really approved unless it's done through the ERMI testing. So it's a certain type of testing that you want to adhere to a certain gold standard in the testing. Okay. And you guys can look that up and find where to send it and everything. And it's it'll run anywhere from about $150 to $200. So. I mean, not too bad to show what's going on in your home. No, To give really. you peace of mind to say. No. And the urine mycotox test is $299. That's really reasonable for someone who's been sick for years and has been missing the chronic, their health journey. They're going to a piece to it. It, you know, yeah. that's, that's worth it. Yeah. The way I look at mold and a lot of these even stealth inf infections that you talk about, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, when a patient presents and they go, I don't know, conventional medicine couldn't help me. They've done every test. <laughs> I've been on every single medication, every supplement. It's, it's sort of one of those things. It's like a last resort where you're just like, oh my God, is this what's been going on with my life? Right. Yeah. And I'm sure you've seen patients like that. Everyone. Every single one. Every one. And, and the majority of them are even victims of the system. Once yeah. they come to me, the more damage has been done because they had been missed or been given medic antibiotics when it wasn't a bacteria. It was a fungus and you Oof. made it worse. Oof. So many people with sinus infections. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's how it presents. So you're doing great work out there. I hope so. Yeah. yeah and helping I mean, a lot of people. That's yeah, a beautiful thing. I hope so. It feels really nice. I feel like this is why I went to medical school. Yeah. So what are you going to venture in now? What what do you what's some new I don't know, new supplements, new plans. What are, what are we, what are we expecting? Well, you're here? kind of getting the first um, he, word on this actually. I don't think I've told anybody. Okay, so this is groundbreaking information I right here. Kind of groundbreaking everyone. Okay. Yeah. So so basically, um, we're doing I per, I told, talked a little bit about it, but not nothing on um, nothing live. So we're doing a Dr. Just Institute. And that's going to come sometime probably in the late spring. Um, it's still really early on. Um, but we're going to use a platform where I'm going to be teaching on modules um, to either practitioners and possibly the general public to the layperson as well. Um, just about the four places we get sickness mm -hmm. and educating people on that. That is amazing. And so it'll be, yeah, and I think we're going to do probably a membership, and I'm always going to be adding videos to the bank of videos. So it's going to be one of those type of things. And then um, fairly soon, it, I was hoping it would be sooner, but, you know, where they're building big platforms and all this thing. Everything takes longer than you expect it to. So um, we're also doing um, a new consult calendar opening up soon with a new landing page. Um, and these are holistic health consults. Um, they aren't patients. I call them my clients. I like to work with their regular medical doctors or healthcare providers, whoever they see. Um, and so I work as a team with people. And so we're going to be doing a teleconferencing and virtual consults from that standpoint. And so it'll be three days a week, probably 12 to 16 hours a week. So I'm hoping to get a lot more people in. And then eventually, um, I would love to make that um, an option for people to practitioners like yourself or whoever else was interested out there in internet land um, with the credentials that I respect to come on board and maybe do um, a consulting service with me um, mm -hmm. if they were ever interested. And that way we can build out a platform um, for people who've been trained under this program um, to actually see clients too and mm -hmm. give them adv great advice, work with other healthcare practitioners. So Ooh. it's a big system and network that's being built. So I appreciate all the patients from everyone. It's it, I'm always kind of 
um, if you leave it to me, I'll jump right off the cliff. And then yeah. everyone has to kind of pull me back. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so you got some big things planned. I do, yeah. Well, I'm very happy yeah, to hear. I, Th- do. I think it's going to be wonderful for not only patients, but practitioners to have access to learning more. Because I know that there's a lot mm-hmm. of... Folks in, you know, graduated medical school who goes, damn, I wish I knew more about nutrition or I wish I knew more about mold toxicity, yeah. right? Yeah. So I, I understand your modules are going to be helpful for these people to get that education, like continuing education. Absolutely. Basically. Absolutely. And, you know, I want it to be kind of an elite program for people. So, you know, I don't want anyone to be in the consulting program or even being in an affiliate program without having gone some, through some of the program with the modules. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there's it's a big plans. You Only know? the best big of the best plans. from your side. That's right. That's what I'm hearing. You're doing big things too now, sir. I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah. I'm feeling pretty You're good with my life. You're out there doing it. Oh, I see you. Yeah. So, so, all right. Well, let's end with this. Sure. Three... Let's say, Adam, it doesn't have to do with what we talked about. Three things that people need to know or take home right now, the three most important things for them. Health, mental, emotional, I don't care what it is. Everything. Everything. Man, I always have to go back to my slogan, be your own best doctor, Mm -hmm. because so many people come to me and they say, thank you, because you taught me, I spoke up and I advocated for myself. And my doctor wrote Lotus naltrexone for me because he read about it. He educated himself and it was because of me. And, you know, or whatever it is, you know, don't sit there when you know something's wrong with your body and just take it, say something, Mm -hmm. speak up. They don't know better than you. So that's number one. Mm -hmm. Always advocate for yourself no matter what. You're not wrong. You're not wrong about your body. Number two is um, don't take my supplements and think you're going to change your life without changing your life. (laughs) Amen to that. (laughs) None of that. I mean, I, I never, even if it's my own supplements, I don't want people on pills forever. Mm-hmm. It has to be a lifestyle change. So that's number two. And number three is I really feel like um, we're here to be love and be happy and show people how to do that. So you need to step back from your life and take a look at it and make sure you're happy and you're doing things that make you feel good. And if you're not, you need to change the tra- trajectory of your life because you really are supposed to be happy. It's not supposed to be miserable. And you can find the sunshine through the rain. So um, that's the three things. Advocate for yourself. Don't think you're going to take my supplements and change your life without changing your life. And then, you know, always, 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 um, oh, just lost my train of thought. Just there. be aligned with what you want to do aligned. and your happiness. You know, check in with yourself. Make sure. Yeah. Make sure that you... Um, are on the path you want to be on because I've been, I kind of got lost in the woods before and not, not checked in with myself and then woke up and been like, I am not on the trajectory for my life that I want to be. Yeah. So, you know, surround yourself with people that way. Make vision boards if you have to. Whatever it is, journal. It's so important. Speak it out loud, whatever it may be. It sounds woo woo, but it's not guys. It's changed my life. It's empowering. Yep. Dr. Jess, this was the best interview I've ever had in my life. Oh, no, you're a great interviewer. You've got a skill here. It, so. it, it, it's just because it's all love. Yeah, I believe it. It's just flowing. It's just flowing. So um, thank you for coming. Thank, thank you. you for educating the public. Thank you for educating me. Um, and I look forward to seeing, and we look forward to seeing <laughs> what comes in the next few months, in the next few years, okay? Same. Thank you so much for having me. Much love, Jess. Ah, oh, thanks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was the show. It was a really good one. I loved every moment of it. That interview was amazing. I hope you loved it. Um, So check this out. Next week is going to be some really good information coming out. I'm doing a good product review. I'm ranting hard, harder than this week. And um, we'll have another really good guest in. It'll be a surprise guest. So tune in next week. And uh, as always, much love, high vibrations, and, uh, you know, keep telling yourself you love yourself. Spread peace, spread joy, spread love, spread everything, high vibrations. Much love. Goodbye.